What's up, guys? Derek, moreplaysmoredates.com. More Today, we're going to be talking about what I think is the cause of GH gut and bodybuilding. And my uh, hypothesis may be a bit different than the traditional, you know, it's all the HGH that grows their organs because that's not necessarily the case. So I'm going to delve into it with you guys and lay out what I think exactly is going on. So there's a belief that is widespread in the bodybuilding community that using HGH, MK677, or other GH-releasing peptides is going to cause your intestines to grow, start protruding outwards, and consequently give a very unesthetic, distended look of the abdominals, and it's called GH gut, or bubble gut, and I just want to lay out my hypothesis on exactly what I think is going on here. Increased GH levels will not push organs against the stomach. While increased GH levels can cause parts of your body to grow bigger, mostly your bones, the amount of GH it would take to cause your intestines to grow so much that they would literally be pushing your stomach wall outwards is not anything anybody is using. Bones and tendons in the, gro in the body may grow fairly substantially with extreme dosages of GH, and we see that all the time, but intestines growing to the point of nearly exploding out of the abdominal wall is not what's going on here. The true cause of GH gut, in my opinion, is... Typically, the overconsumption of food with carbohydrates in particular being the main macronutrient responsible. And on top of that, GH abuse can also indirectly cause GH gut, but the mechanism by which it causes it is much different than what most believe, in my opinion. It's not uncommon for a large bodybuilder to be taking in upwards of nearly a thousand grams of carbs a day, especially when a bodybuilder is trying to gain more size. They need to increase their caloric intake accordingly, which means eating more carbs even after they've already been eating significantly more than the body needs. And keep in mind, caloric needs for the average guy versus caloric needs for a bodybuilder trying to get past 300 pounds of lean tissue are significantly different, but the pancreas limits are exactly the same. Like you have the same pancreas as the next guy who's not trying to bodybuild and become a mass monster. If you are constantly cranking blood sugar through the roof day in and day out, the pancreas will be stressed in order to produce the amount of insulin necessary to bring blood sugar back to homeostasis. And this is where insulin resistance and pre-diabetic symptoms start to rear their ugly head. And when the intestines are backed up with an overabundance of carbohydrates, a backlog of bacteria in the small intestine can develop and gut health can be destroyed while your body body attempts to remedy the situation and an overabundance of bacteria in the small intestine leads to significant bloating and gas and leads to very obvious abdominal distension. Unlike the large intestine, the small intestine does not have a large number of bacteria most of the time and when a bodybuilder overconsumes carbohydrates they can start becoming insulin resistant and GH abuse just contributes to this as it will also severely raise blood sugar levels at high enough dosages. So as insulin resistance sets in and the body has chronically high blood sugar levels, gastric emptying becomes delayed and the intestines start to lose their ability to contract as effectively. Intestinal transit is severely impaired as a result of this. And as you can see here, this is what intestinal transit looks like in somebody who has good glucose control. On the right, you see what it looks like in somebody who's becoming insulin resistant and has chronic high blood sugar levels. And you can see here, gastric emptying on the left in the healthy individual and gastric emptying on the right, delayed in the individual with hyperglycemia. The gut flora normally would protect the intestine from bacteria. However, if the speed of intestinal transit is negatively affected by chronically high blood sugar levels, then backflow from the colon into the small intestine can occur where it becomes colonized with colonic bacteria. And the result of this is bacterial overgrowth in the small intestine and ultimately very obvious, you know, quote unquote, GH gut or distension or bubble gut. And as insulin resistance becomes worse, intestinal motility is hindered in parallel just compounding the issue. So why did bodybuilders from the 70s and 80s not have this GH gut? The reason why bodybuilders from the golden era did not have GH guts comes down to the fact that they didn't have access to GH and the mass monster era hadn't started yet. So there was no chemical warfare arms race to get as big as humanly possible. As soon as mass monsters started being rewarded circa the Dorian era, there was an obvious need to get bigger to stay competitive. And to get bigger, you need to eat even more than you already were, meaning you are stressing your pancreas even more than you had to previously to keep your blood sugar in check. And the inevitable result that will occur at some stage, no matter who the individual is, 
would be abdominal distension once the amount of food overconsumption reaches a point that the digestive system can no longer support and a backlog of bacteria starts to seep into the intestine where it shouldn't be, which causes bloating and, you know, quote unquote, GH gut. So we see this time and time again in the modern bodybuilding era as bodybuilders constantly chase size and have to push the boundaries of their digestive health in order to do so. Is it reversible? Another thing many individuals who, you know, talk about this topic seem to not take into account is that there have been many successful pro bodybuilders who had a bad showing on stage with gut distension, GH gut, and then the next time they stepped on stage, suddenly, like magic, their waist was more streamlined and their gut had magically vanished. So did their organs suddenly shrink and rearrange themselves? Obviously not. Their stomach was never protruding from their innards being pushed to the outside. It was simply from their compromised intestinal health health causing bloating and distension and obviously there are compounding factors here in terms of visceral you know fat buildup gaining of muscle in general on your obliques and your abdominal wall and your midsection in general the bigger you get the more muscle you gain everywhere and this is you know not restrictive to you know it's not like you can just pack on muscle everywhere but your midsection you're going to pack on muscle everywhere and your midsection is going to grow in parallel, unfortunately. But aside from this, there are multiple factors here that ultimately lead to the very, you know, obvious distension you see on stage. And at the end of the day, just one of the main factors is this digestive, compromised digestive health. And a lot of guys have shown that they've been able to reverse it simply by getting their dietary practices in order and essentially quitting the mass chasing, you know, arms race. Ben Pikulski is a great example of this. He showed up on uh you know all of his contests in his you know pinnacle where he was trying to be competitive at a high level he would show up and have massive distension and this is something i covered in my previous video talking about the origin of you know lack of stomach control and then i talked about his showing at uh the toronto show as well as the vancouver show where he displayed a much improved stomach control and just very very good vacuum and while he did downsize in order to hit this it's the result of him not having to chase that mass anymore and put his digestive health in you know a compromised position and to also pull a bit of tissue off of that midsection because he was he did in fact gain a lot of you know mass everywhere which contributes to this bulked up look and the essentially building more tissue than your frame can handle but at the end of the day the massive distension is going to come down to the compromised gut health and this is why he was able to reverse this so significantly and there are other examples of this too so if his organs had truly grown, there's no way he would have been able to get rid of it. Like even if he downsized, you're not gonna be able to shrink your intestines at your next show. Like it just wouldn't happen. The truth of the matter is when you're chasing extreme levels of size, you will inevitably have to over consume food and at one point or another likely impair your intestinal health. Ben Pakulski evidently lost some muscle size in between his previous showings where he had prominently displayed a massive GH gut and his most recent showing where he had an awesome vacuum pose and no distension issues can be solely attributed to him no longer trying to eat as much food as he would have needed if he wanted to keep gaining size. And this is what he was doing previously when he had horrible distension issues as he was trying to play the size game to remain competitive with the mass monsters. And I'm sure, you know, potentially drugs might have had something to do with it as well, but I think it largely comes down to the mass change chasing and the overconsuming of food in order to get to that next level to try and hang with these guys. Roly Winkler, another perfect example. He got his, you know, GH gut under control for the most part. Was it, you know, attributed to the use of a waist trainer? I don't think so. I think it had more to do with dietary changes than anything. If you check out his old showing from the 2015 Arnold Classic, for example, you can clearly see he was one of the worst offenders for a prominent GH gut. And now up to 2019, he can almost hit a vacuum on stage. Now, granted, he doesn't have the prettiest midsection, but that's just, you know, what comes with the territory of being near 300 pounds. But the fact that he's able to get that gut under control just goes to show his intestines didn't just suddenly like decrease in size by 50%. A lot of it just has to do with, you know, the bacteria backlog that's, get, that's screwing up your digestive system. And a bodybuilder can literally go from having a vacuum to having extreme amounts of distension, you know, GH gut, overnight just by screwing up their carb up and compromising their intestinal health before stepping on stage and this is why you'll see bodybuilders show up on stage with huge gh guts and then a week later show up to another show with the issue completely fixed and getting to phil heath so obviously this is the most you know prominent case of gh gut as of now everyone wants to know is this guy going to be able to clean it up and show up with a tighter midsection to regain his title there are many other cases of gh guts and bodybuilding but phil heath has 
garnered the most attention because of how many Olympias he's won. And, you know, many of them people actually didn't think he deserved as of, you know, the more recent ones because of this gut issue. And I don't believe Phil Heath's hernia was the cause of his distension issues. It probably played some role on his abdominal control, but the fact remains that his gut has been distended for a few years now. And I believe the root of the issue is compromised intestinal health and chasing mass. And I also believe Phil Heath is showing early signs of insulin resistance, also called Palumbo. If you compare Phil Heath in 2012 to Phil Heath in 2018, the one glaring difference is his midsection. So whether the result of that is GH abuse, overconsumption of food to chase size to stay on top of the division, or a combination of both, I can't really say for certain, but my best guess is that it comes down to those two things mainly in conjunction with some of the other factors I mentioned earlier. But, you know, if you look at him, Phil Heath at the 2012 Olympia, just you know, the pinnacle of physiques. Like there's no, nothing you can knock on this guy. Arguably one of the best physiques of all time. Insane muscle bellies, tight midsection, good abdominal control. Nothing you could hate on this guy whatsoever. It's just, you know, completely lights out. And when he turns around to the front, you could, you know, there's nothing really apparent that everyone knocks him for in more modern times in the last few years. And when you look at him going forward to the, just look at that, like, so much better than recent years and it just makes you wonder exactly what happened there and going forward to the 2018 olympia you know it's almost zero ab control whether you know i don't think the hernia plays the entire role here you can literally see like tissue hanging off the side that just wasn't there before and it's not like he's not in shape the guy's conditioned as hell it's just the literal probably aging process in conjunction with compromised gut health in conjunction with maybe GH abuse in conjunction with some of the other factors I outlined. But to me, this is, you know, showing early signs of Palumboism and could spell the end of the career, in my opinion, because usually when guys start to display signs like this, it's hard to turn around and, you know, correct that kind of stuff because it's not typically something you can, you know, really reel back and fix entirely. And that's why I think the hernia is sort of like a cop out, make it seem like there's a chance that it's going to totally reverse itself. And while other guys have had success reversing it to a large extent, I think oftentimes it requires a lot of downsizing to be able to get rid of it and really address the root of the issue, which, you know, could be a multitude of factors that I outlined earlier. But I just think trying to stay on top and fend off some of these massive dudes like Rami, Bonac, and obviously Curry in the upcoming show next year, I just don't see Phil coming in with this corrected. I think this is, you know, the beginning of the end for him. And that's just my educated guess. But I could be totally wrong. Obviously, we've seen Roly really like turn it around. But to me, this just looks more like a case of Palumboism rather than the bacterial backlog, which was more of the case with Roly Winkler, where it was a digestive issue entirely, in my opinion, for the most part. So anyways, in conclusion, no growth hormone, peptides, MK677, whatever it is you want to talk about, it's increasing GH and IGF-1 levels will not cause intestinal growth to the point that it pushes against the abdominal wall and causes severe, disgusting distension. I think it indirectly contributes, but I don't think it's via this intestinal growth that everyone seems to think. I think poor diet choices or forcing oneself to have to consume absurd amounts of food in order to stay competitive in bodybuilding with these mass monsters. In Insulin resistance from GH, diet, or other causes and compromised gut health is what will ultimately lead to this extreme bloating and distension you see on stage, also called, you know, GH gut. So anyways, let me know what you guys think below. If you have your own hypothesis, what you think the reason is for these distended guts. If you think Phil Heath's going to be able to turn it around next year, what you think he needs to do in order to fix his issue. I'd be interested to see what you guys have to say. And obviously some constructive uh, conversation would be good in case other guys in the comment section might be having a similar issue and want to see how they can get their midsection under control. Any comments are welcome. They also help the algorithm out. So obviously that's much appreciated too. If you guys can like the video, that would also be awesome. Uh, check me out on Instagram at more plates, underscore more dates, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, etc. Check out the newsletter link in the description below. If you sign up, you're going to get automatically sent all the articles when I publish them, which are far more elaborate than my videos and feature all the clinical studies and trials that I reference in a organized format broken down by table of contents rather than me just talking on the fly like I do in these videos. So thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.